Okay, it looks like we have most people now. So uh, thank you for uh, joining this webinar. Um, my name is Brian Mellon. I'm the Marketing and Comms um, a Manager at the University of Queensland. And yes, so this uh, webinar is on uh, living in uh, Brisbane, probably my favourite topic of all our, our webinar series. So I might introduce our panel. I'll just change the gallery so you can see everyone. Um, so I might go through the tiles and just um, introduce um, everyone. And if you can say who you are, where you're from, and one thing that you weren't expecting about uh, uh, Brisbane. Uh, Jacinta, can I start with you? Hi, everyone. Welcome. <clears throat> so I'm Jacinta Sinclair, Medical School Student Support Advisor. Um, I've been living in Brisbane my whole life. Um, so one of the things that I just found really surprising recently was how great the ECHA was. So the ECHA is a, is a uh, show that is, runs for a couple of weeks around this time of year, and uh, it was really fabulous to go along. So you'll get the opportunity to do that when you come. Okay, let's talk to you soon. Thank you. Uh, Pranav, over to you, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Pranav. I'm a second year, current second year medical student, and I'm from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, for Brisbane, I think the thing that surprised me the most is just the fact that, like, you can take a ferry to class if you really want to. Like, there's a whole ferry system. It's used so much, and it can take you everywhere through the city. And so someone from another city that does have a river going through it, but it's never used for anything at any other point other than just to like go down it. I think coming here and just being able to be like, eh, I'm not feeling the bus. Let me just take the ferry into the city or to the uni is something that's really cool. Awesome. Um, Maggie, over to you. Hi everyone, my name is Maggie. Um, I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm in the Oshner program and it's my first year. Uh, what surprised me about the city was how quickly it felt like home. I know that sounds a bit cliche, but I was really taken aback. It's a very livable, nice city. So I settled in quicker than I thought I would. Great, thank you. And we've also got another student who might uh, join us a bit later, but as uh, soon as she comes in, I'll get her to, to introduce herself as well. Um, so we're going to take questions uh, via the chat. Um, so we're going to have a presentation first uh, by uh, Jacinta, and then we've got a few uh, uh, topics that we're going to uh, work our way through. Um, Jacinta, over to you. You're on mute. Okay, are you seeing anything? Yep, oh. um, you, you just need to put into presentation mode. How's, how do I do that? <laughs> oh. Sorry. Uh, there we are. You got it? Yep, got it. Great. Okay. Well, so, um, you know, we, uh, so my role, of course, is medical student support advisor, and I um, support students in all well-being. And um, I've come along today just to talk to you about, you know, living in Brisbane and how great it is um, and the support available to you. So moving to a new country or state to study can be daunting. Um, so I'm sure we'll hear from our students about that. But um, it's great to hear that, you know, you can settle in quickly. Um, and it can be a little bit daunting if you're living away from um, home for the first time as well. So at UQ, we offer a wide range of services to support you before and after you commence at UQ. Um, so, of course, as I said, I'm one of the principal student advisors and Valeska Wood is the other one. So the medical school student support team, we're here to um, support you throughout your journey for the four years. So when you first come to UQ, just a little, um, you know, just to let you know that during the first one to four weeks, you'll have a lot of orientation activities to help you transition into the program and into university. And there's a lot of um, opportunities for you to um, go to sessions prior to your um, orientation as well. And we also um, offer mental health first aid training for students um, that can be certified. So we run those before you start your program. So look out for all that information. 
But when you come to orientation, you'll have a welcome ceremony. You'll be introduced to the MD program. There's an introduction to clinical skills and professional skills, uh, to the learning community, learning in medicine, and also uh, welcome sessions for all our OSHNA and international students. So all the students get together and welcome you. And then um, there's a lot of information sessions from our team as well. Um, yep. So there's two important websites uh, to, to, to sort of log into before you um, commence. So we'll be sharing this with you a little bit later as well. But the first one is um, all the information for international students. So it talks about visas, overseas health cover, accommodation and airport pickup, um, and how to register for preparing to start information sessions. So these are live or online information sessions before your orientation. And they cover settling into UQ, transitioning to life in Brisbane, and give you guides to enrolling and how to navigate university life here. Um, and then the second website is the starting at UQ, and that'll walk you through everything else you need to know. So things like setting up your email accounts with your username and passwords. So, um, before you arrive here, you know, it's important to accept your offer, apply for a student visa, um, activate your UQ student account, visit the Starting at UQ website that I just mentioned, enrol in your chosen courses, plan your finances and accommodation, and also book um, a airport pickup. So I'll talk about that in a moment and then plan what to pack. So we, you know, our students have a wonderful time here. Um, the weather's fabulous. So, you know, they'll talk about that as well with you. But it's important to plan your accommodation um, before you arrive. So we have a, um, a service for you. It's a UQ accommodation service. Um, so there's dedicated people to assist you with your accommodation and also um, any questions you might have. So we've got approved off-campus providers We've got UQ residential colleges. There's private rentals as well. Um, UQ rentals database that you can check out and um, short stay accommodation as well. So the support um, for private rentals as well. Um, there's the RTA, QSTARS and Tenants Queensland. So there's a lot of information for you to have a read about, you know, how to set up a, um, a lease, um, and then there's support available if um, there's any problems at all. So UQ will pick you up from the airport um, if you give them three business days of when you're coming in. Um, so that's a really great service. I don't know if their students use that one, but it's, um, you know, they just make sure that you arrive safely and transport you to your accommodation. Um, so there's a link that you can um, book in and we'll ensure that we pick you up and welcome you. So planning your finances is really important as well. So, um, you know, working out a budget and how much, you know, you get on your loans as well. So your initial costs will be the um, accommodation when you arrive prior to going into your booked accommodation. You'll need um, four weeks rent for bond money and pay two weeks in advance for rent. Um, and then your connection to utilities like electricity and gas. And sometimes that's included in your rent, so check that out. And then furniture, we have like, um, you know, uh, what is it called? Oh, can't think of where you, where do you get your furniture from, guys? Someone tell me. Um, I'm going to go with IKEA. IKEA. <laughs> okay. And also, I was thinking that one where you could just go and pick it up from people when it's cheap. What's that? Not um, Facebook pages, things like that. Anyway, then the ongoing costs are, are rent, utilities, phone and internet. Of course, you know, equipment for uh, study and then food, transport and recreation. So we sort of estimate roughly for a student living off campus, you can see there are monthly um, cost of anywhere between 1610 this in, in Australian dollars to about 3755 
So it's important to get your overseas healthcare cover. Um, that's important for your visa as well. Um, and Alliance Global Assistance is a, is a really great overseas cover. They have um, a lot of support for students as well. And there's an app that you can download um, that provides you with um, support and options for healthcare and uh, counselling and that type of thing. Um, so, you know, that's a really great um, health cover to go with. So what to pack when you're coming over? If you're anything like me, I would overpack. So have a think about, you know, have a think about it before you come. So you'll need your important documents. So print out your electronic visa, your valid passport, leave a copy of your passport at home with your family. And uh, of course, any transcripts you need, um, you would have already probably uploaded your immunization status. So bring any um, essential medication and prescriptions, bank account details from home and prescriptions for glasses or contact lenses. Um, and then pack those important items like your passport and things like that in your carry-on luggage. And um, be sure to observe Australia's quarantine laws and be aware of what you can and can't bring to Australia. Right, look at that one. So um, we're going to talk about Brisbane um, shortly with you, and you can hear students' accounts of everything. Um, but you know, we've got a great uh, website there, future students uq um, .edu .au, living in Brisbane. So Brisbane's a very livable city and very safe as well. Um, as student services, so we really support our students. We've got a whole range of free um, assistance available to you. So there's counselling sessions. You can get up to 10 in the year that are free. We've got, as I mentioned, account, um, accommodation services. There's financial hardship support. Um, there's a whole heap of um, scholarships available for students. You do have to apply for them. We do have financial hardship support where we can support students um, in hardship, you have to go through a um, an assessment, of course, of your hardship. But um, to be able to come here, you need to, um, you know, be able to afford university and living out of home as well. We've got a whole lot of international student support. Um, we've got learning advisors that are free. There's chaplaincy services, um, mentoring. I'll talk about in a moment. There's a whole heap of volunteering and uh, UQ Life do a, a great um, actors camp activations, campus activations at Hurston and St Lucia. Um, so set yourself up for success We um, by pairing up with the second year MD mentor. So we run an eight week program um, where a um, you can get together with a group. I think we usually have about six students together with one, with two mentors. And, um, you know, they will meet with you in those first couple of weeks and then you continue to, they'll check in on you over that eight week course. And um, you can receive that support as you transition into UQ. Um, and then as we, as you go along in the years, there's mentoring available for year threes. So the year fours mentor the year threes. And then we'll probably look at year threes mentoring year twos as well. So look out for that. You'll see that little slogan um, and register. This says by the 20th um, last year, but please ignore that. <laughs> It'll be uh, next year to register for the mentoring. And UQ Life as well. UQ do a lot of activations and things to support students. So there's a UQ Mates program. UQ Life, um, you can follow on Instagram and Facebook. There's a whole heap of faculty uh, of medicine introductionary events and um, join UQMS. So that's the uh, university's medical society. We'll do some fabulous support for students and uh, it's really great. They do some great social activities as well, but also educational. So it's um, really worthwhile connecting in. Now, if you want to work, um, there's an information session that you can attend that they'll talk to you about, you know, the working rights of your student visa, how to get a tax file number, where to look for uh, student-friendly jobs, 
and um, how to manage the uh, tax on your um, earnings. So um, you'll also get a link to that as well. So register for those. So that's it from me for the moment. And we'll um, go and have a chat to all our students about how they've been settling it. Thanks, Brian. Great, thank you, Jacinta there. Um, are a few questions in the chat for you already? Um, let me just go up and have a look. Um, so someone was asking about the mental health first aid training. Um, is it uh, free of charge or is there a fee? Um, can you just talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so you'll get that information when you um, when you register and you know when you sign up and about to come over. So it is free. We'll run it for, we usually run it for first year medical students. We usually have about 80 students that attend. It's a really nice pre-orientation get together as well with students. Um, and yeah, you'll get information. So you just register and then we'll meet with you before uh, you start. I think we're usually starting dates around the end of January for first year students. So we run it the week before. Um, the limo pickup from the airport to accommodation is free as well. You just need to register and uh, and then they'll pick you up um, with all your bags and everything and take you to your accommodation. Great, thank you. There was one more question there about the weather. Is it humid? Um, uh, Pranav, as a Canadian, do you want to <laughs> answer that one? Because I won't go to Maggie from California. <laughs> uh, sure, I can take that one. Uh, yeah, in the summers, it gets pretty humid. Um, you can see like temperatures from like 25 to 35 degrees Celsius over the summer, but the book and it gets pretty humid, you'll like sweat through your clothes and need to shower. But thankfully, uh, at least from my perspective, that doesn't last too long. And then you'll cut to my favorite part of the Brisbane year, which is, um, and I will use quotation marks for this winter for any Canadians out there, where between sort of May till like September, it's really about like 20 degrees, like a nice sunny breeze, like a low UV index. It's like the best weather of all time. It's like fall, but for like the entire like couple of months. So really do enjoy the weather then. But yeah, it does get pretty hot. So make sure you have your summer outfit. And if you don't have a daily sunscreen routine, everyone, please get on that. Take care of your skin. Great. Thank you. Um, so Can I just to... add to that, yep. Brian? Sorry. Yep. I'll just add to that. Sorry. Can't help myself. It is warm outside, but EQs or air conditioned and the, the TBL rooms that you go into, you both might agree, are pretty cold. So always pack a jumper with you because it does get quite cool in the uh, air conditioning. Thank you. Great, thanks. And uh, Maggie just put in the chat that she prefers it to California weather. Um, so we are going to go through a bunch of uh, topics now. So the first one is about accommodation. Um, so if the panelists can just uh, talk about their living arrangements, how they organise the accommodation, and I recommend any suburbs around uh, Brisbane. Um, Maggie, can I start with you? Yeah, sure. So I was very kind of active on the Facebook groups prior. I found someone and kind of took over their lease. Um, if you want to kind of take that approach to take out, I guess, any like anxiety you might be f facing as you go in, I think that's pretty nice. Um, so I live in South Bank, which is a beautiful area. It's very uh, close to the public transit. I just hop on the bus and I'm at school pretty fast. It's a pretty common area for people to live, especially international students. But there's a lot of other common suburbs, like probably like West End. And then um, people live closer to school sometimes in St. Lucia and Tuong. Um, I would say, though, that you don't have to take the approach that I did finding someone super fast. You can also just have temporary accommodation via Scape or through UQ. I don't think that's extremely urgent, but just if you're a person like me and you want everything settled beforehand, it's more of kind of a personal choice. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Pranav. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm in my own sort of rental, uh, but I didn't have the opportunity to set anything up beforehand because there was not really an international cohort before ours due to the COVID, due to the COVID pandemic. And so what I did is I got an Airbnb here for two weeks. And so after um, I landed, I had two weeks there. And during those two weeks, I went and looked in the rental market and found a place to sign a lease. So that's how I approached it. 
but uh if you you can't really do that in advance as unless you're taking over someone's lease like you could back home um and so because back home uh, for most of the canadians and americans in here it's pretty easy to just like start looking at listings and you could even like get a place before even looking at it that's not quite the case here you should go in for inspections you should see what you're doing and it is an in-person process and so for me when i came here um I instantly, like for, for two weeks, I just went and like, kept looking at places in different areas until I found one I liked. And so for suburbs, I agree with Maggie, uh, especially a lot of the Oshners live in South Bay. Uh, it's a really central, really nice area. I myself um, am in Wollongabba, which is uh, sort of one over from that. And it's a bit closer to the schools and the hospitals. Um, and I'd, uh, I had some advice I'd give if you are looking for a place after I land here is depending on wherever your learning community ends up being, I think like proximity is one of the most important things. Just when you're close to where you have your classes or you're close to your clinical site, it makes life a lot easier. And the public transit system in Brisbane in the metro area is really, really great, super easy. Like dozen buses a minute at some of these stations to get you wherever you need to go. Thank you. Uh, Jacinta, is there anything you'd like to, to add? I'd probably like to add um, that you know, there, yes, um, as we heard about the the bus route system, um, the 66 bus takes you through to the Royal Brisbane, MARTA, um, UQ and PA. So that's kind of our, our learning community. So someone's asked, can you explain a learning community? So you'll be um, allocated to a learning community, which is either the north side of Brisbane, south side, um, and you'll stay in that community um, for the entire four years. So you might be um, Southside community, which might be PA, and you'll go to uh, the PA hospital and you may go to QE2 or Redlands or um, Greenslope, is that right, maybe? And, um, and, you know, throughout those four years. So it's really great that you get to stay in a learning community because you get to build friendships with um, everyone over those four years um, as well. So for the accommodation as well, most students, as I say, live in uh, South Bank. Um, but, you know, as you get into the uh, later years, um, you might want to move closer to Prince Charles Hospital or to Hurston or what have you. Wollongabba is really popular. To Ringa as well and to Wong. Um, and yeah, if you have any questions, you know, I'll pop the uh, accommodation information in the uh, chat as well. Um, you can have a look at that and um, sort out an appointment early. Thank you. Thanks. Um, there was one other question Do you need a guarantor for a lease? Yes, I imagine you do. Maggie, do you, did you have to? Uh, yes, I needed a guarantor for my lease, um, and I think that's a pretty common situation. And I also want to quickly mention, um, there's this name, Aria Properties, that a lot of people kind of bank on as being pretty reliable. Um, it is pretty expensive, I'm not going to lie, but I feel like if you're looking for a very kind of reliable name, I would recommend that one. Thank you. Um, and there, I saw there was a question about spiders and Maggie, you put in the chat. Do you want to <laughs> just elaborate on that one? The spider situation in Australia? Yeah, in essence, my comment is just you see them if you go looking for them. So if you go out into the country or you go on a hike, um, you might see a spider, but I have yet to see one in an urbanized area. There's none like on the concrete outside. I've never seen one in my apartment. Thankfully, I've never seen one in the hospital. They're not inside. So unless you're going into nature. Yeah, and they might be big. They're called huntsman spiders, but they're harmless and you learn to love them. <laughs> The geckos will look after the spiders, won't they? Geckos are little, like little lizardy sort of um, insects that sit on the roofs in uh, in our Queenslanders, and uh, they make a clicky sort of sound. And uh, but they eat the spiders, and they're harmless. Yeah. They're only tiny. <laughs> Uh, the next topic we're going to cover is living expenses and budget. Um, Pranav, can I start with you? And how do you manage your monthly uh, budget? Do you think Brisbane is expensive? Um, 
and was it hard to open a bank account? Um, so yeah, in terms of like expenses, I'd say Brisbane is a pretty average cost city. Uh, so I'm from Calgary, so I compare it pretty similar to that. Uh, the rent prices have been rising quite a bit in the last two years that I've been here. And I'd say that's your most major expense, um, especially if you're doing a private rental because student accommodation is cheaper, um, especially if you do something at UQ or at Scape or anything like that. Uh, so rent is like the major cost. Um, most people I know, other internationals who are living in Brisbane, uh, they do it by a weekly system here, so not a monthly system. And so... Uh, Rents probably range from around four to six hundred a week, uh, for as like the bit as the range for a lot of the international students. So that'll set you back about sixteen hundred to two thousand, and that's for a one bedroom apartment, and usually fully furnished, especially for the optioners. Um, but I would recommend that as well in case you don't want to set it up, um, and like sort of deal with getting furniture until you're a little bit more settled. Um, for all other expenses. Uh, the way I'd say it is when you come here, you'll feel that everything is slightly more expensive, but that's also because tax is included in the cost. So keep that in mind. Every price you see for everything in Australia, tax is included in the price and it's 10% for anyone who's curious. And so every all your groceries will seem like a dollar more expensive. That's just because of the tax in them. So I'd say like living costs is pretty equal to moving out from your hometown and going pretty much any other university. Brisbane, for as big and nice of a city it is, is definitely more affordable considering it has like a basically around 3 million people here, give or take. And so for that sort of like major city, at least for my fellow Canadians, you're not playing Vancouver or Toronto prices, at least not yet. So hopefully that holds. Opening a bank account is really quick, really simple. Um, I'd highly recommend uh, you do it. Even just for the ease of like for e-transferring or venmoing for the Americans, like money to people and stuff like that. It takes like, it took me like 10 minutes to open and you can even open the bank account from home where so I just filled in my, the combat application at home and then I came here I showed them my IDs within like 10 minutes I had a bank account so I'd say very easy um monthly expenses for me I like track my budgets um and I've like at this point I have a pretty like set system in terms of like how much I have and I think the budget guidelines that they showed in the presentation are pretty much pretty accurate depending on how much you're willing to spend the rent really swings how much you spend on budget but groceries and accommodation and transport and uh, groceries and transport and the rest were pretty accurate from that list. So I would follow that for in terms of like getting your guideline. Great. Thank you. Um, Maggie. Uh, yeah, just to echo a lot of what has already been said, um, I'm from Los Angeles, so my kind of baseline for expensive is pretty astronomical. So I found that Brisbane was very affordable in comparison to that. Um, for the bank account, yeah, I definitely think ComBank is the most commonly used bank. It's very friendly and kind of open to students. I went in person and in a day had a bank account opened, but um, as mentioned, you can do it online as well. Um, and I did want to quickly kind of address a concern I saw in the chat. Um, someone was kind of worried about where they should live equidistant to campus or their site. As far as that goes, I would say try to be closest to a public transit route. So if you're worried about time, try to be closest to a bus station, because as mentioned before, the 66 will take you wherever you need to go. Great, thank you. Um, Jacinta, anything you want to add about living expenses? Not really. Um, we, we find that most students manage quite well. It's only if there's been an unexpected um, hardship that comes up that there can be an issue. Um, and I just wanted to say as well with the health cover, there was a question in there. So that that health cover will um, essentially cover you for, for the 24-hour emergency assistance and any medical advice partial cover of medical services provided by doctors, um, partial coverage of medical services of pathology and radiology, some prescription medication and um, emergency ambulance services. So um, when you start as well, we have um, a list of GPs that look after medical students and some that will bulk bill. Um, so all that information will be given to you um, prior to arriving. I've probably jumped on to the next thing. Sorry. Okay. I was, yeah, you. I was just going to say that's a great transition to our next topic. Um, right. I just want to make sure that there was a question earlier about Facebook groups that should um, people should join. So I know there is an answer uh, Facebook group already open. 
Pranav, do you know if the UQMS um, incoming class Facebook account has been opened or not? not uh, those haven't been set up yet. They'll probably get set up closer to around September, October. But the uh, Austrac does usually set, like unofficially set up one for all the Canadian students. So we've had one for my year. They, there's one last year. And so someone, uh, usually towards the end of August, early September, like there'll be a post on like the Austrac page about like a Facebook group. Uh, and if there isn't one, someone usually makes one by that point. And so at least for all the Canadian students, that is like the the first touch point. And that's what I found out about a lot of other people who were coming to the program. And that's where you can like talk and meet with people early to figure out possibly like roommates and meeting with people who live in your same town and anything like that. Great. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to our next topic. So health and safety. Um, so basically, is it safe in uh, Brisbane and on campus? How do you go about uh, keeping yourself healthy during uh, medical school? Um, and what do you do outside of study to keep yourself healthy? Maggie, I'll start with you. Um, so the first part, it's extremely safe. Like I've been taken aback by how safe I feel every day. I honestly feel thankful to live in a city like this. Um, so that's just kind of my overarching takeaway. As far as kind of like taking care of your mental and physical health, I think that having a good support system is key. Um, and I know that you'll have a mountain of work and I, I do empathize with that, but just making sure that you build those connections as well, because you do need the study breaks and you do need to talk to friends and kind of have a social life and um, just have a break a bit. So I say that take care of and nourish that aspect of your life as well in addition to your studies and it'll actually make you a better student to have some friends to study with. I highly recommend group study at times. Prior to medical school, I never did that, but um, that's kind of a later topic. And far as like physical health goes, um, Brisbane is an extremely beautiful city. There's river walks and you can do a river run. Um, there's so many trails, there's hiking trails. So if you're an outdoors type person, it's excellent. And if you're an indoors type person, there's also everything you can imagine. Pilates classes, boxing classes, cycling classes, the work. So I'd say it's a very active uh, city. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, Pranav? Uh, yeah, I'd like to echo what Maggie said. No issues with safety in the two years I've been here. It's a really safe city, like no issues at all there. So nothing really to worry about on that end. Um, for like for me, staying healthy, pretty easy to find a GP, even if it's just in Dementin. There's a lot of them and our student health coverage is pretty good here. Um, and so when you have that overseas student health cover, you pretty much just go into the GP. And then for me, I have one literally across the street from me. And so it makes like very easy when I need to go. Um, and there's tons of clinics around. So not that hard finding a doctor, pretty easy to get uh, an appointment, at least uh, in my experience. Uh, in terms of like exercise and physical and mental well-being, yeah, I'd like to echo what Maggie said, like coming here, like probably the hardest part is sort of the first like one or two months as you get settled in. And then like once school starts ramping up and you sort of started making some people to talk to and some friends, everything just sort of kind of just like slips by then and you're in your routine and everything just goes ahead. Um, and so, yeah, I'd echo what Maggie said, just like coming here and make the most of it, find some friends. And then uh, something that helped me is that I'm a morning person, but if you aren't, you probably will have to slightly become one, um, especially if you're like me and you like studying at cafes or coffee shops or anything like that, as I find that really helpful. Uh, those all close at two o'clock, give or take here, which for some people back home might be sacrilege considering ours are open like hours and hours later. Uh, but I find that really helpful because even with the time difference, at least for me, um, in the mornings is when you can talk to a lot of people back home. So at least for me, I find it really helpful, you know, get up early. You can start the day, especially the first few months here. Talk to some of your friends from back home. Talk to your family. Just cafes, by the way, Chelsea, not everything. Um, and not all cafes either. Um, and then in terms of exercise, the UQ gym is like actually quite good. And they do give a free week away during the orientation week. Um, but uh, that happens a few weeks into the year. So around mid late February, the UQ gym does give a free week. If you want to do it, there's like tennis courts, there's swimming facilities. Like you have to remember here, the weather is here, good rounds. So if you're doing anything outdoors, Brisbane is definitely the place to be. If you are a runner, you're now coming to heaven. There's like marathons every week in every part of Australia. There's so much to do if you're running or cycling or mountain biking. But at least for me, if you're standard like indoor gym person, 
pretty easy to find those facilities, pretty accessible, and I found them decently priced as well. And so there's really a lot to do here. And I'd recommend, you know, get involved, find some physical activity that you enjoy doing or like something your friends will drag you into, I'm sure. Um, and then, yeah, just stay safe, stay healthy. It's pretty easy in Brisbane. Great, thank you. And I must say the coffee here is pretty good and the cafe culture is there. Um, uh, just into anything else you wanted to add, you did kind of cover this topic a little bit. Yeah, I did a little bit. Um, UQ, we have a uh, GP clinic as well. Um, so that's easy for students to access with some great doctors there. Um, you know, there's a lot of support um, available to you. Brisbane is very is very safe. It's very rare that we have any uh, issues with students like reporting anything. Um, but, you know, UQ takes um, respect very seriously. So we do have, um, we do do a lot of work on UQ respect and we have a sexual misconduct support unit as well. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of support given to students. What else was I going to say? Just walking, we've got a beautiful river. So, you know, if you're not into cycling or running or, but you like a nice walk, there's some beautiful walks around Brisbane as well. And, you know, it is it is very safe. You know, you just don't want to be out at two in the morning walking through some parts of the city. But, um, you know, Friday nights, it's pretty busy out there anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's all I have to say. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, so the next topic is a bit broad, and I think we've probably covered a bit of it. So it's really about uh, Brisbane, so how livable Brisbane is, which we've spoken about. I guess the one thing a lot of people are asking about is uh, public transport and a car. Um, should you own a car? Um, and then also the climate. Um, Pranav, I might start with you on this one. Uh, yeah, sure. So in regards to transit, at least for first uh, first year, public transit will be your savior. It gets you everywhere, pretty accessible to pretty much any area of the city you'd really like to go to. And as I mentioned earlier, um, one of the great things I found about Australia is that there's uh, like concession fees. So like for us, if you're a student, you fall into the concession category. And so you'll get transit fees for 50% off. But not only that, you'll sort of get concession discounts at a lot of other events as well. So like similarly, if you want to go and I highly recommend you do go to a rugby game or a footy game, which is AFL, or even for me, even going to like a cricket game, you can get discounts on all those tickets. There's all the big major sporting events like we just hosted the FIFA Women's World Cup. And what's going on. Um, and so at least for that, public transport is great, takes you everywhere for games and stuff. They'll even be free buses, so all of that stuff. So that's really good. I actually do own a car this year so i have my own car here in brisbane um especially as an usher i don't think it's really necessary but uh, for as a canadian i'm doing my third and fourth years here so depending on where you are from rotation or like if you have a partner who's coming to live with you or anything else like that i think like if you can financially justify it it does make life a little easier you can go to like trips on the beach on weekends if you want to really get into surfing or anything like that it's really great for mental health. We have some amazing beaches that are like less than an hour away. Very easy to go and do that. Helps with groceries and anything like that. I don't think it's not necessary. You can totally get through all four years without a car. Without a car, I know tons of people who have. It really depends on personal choice. But regardless, you wouldn't need one for your first year um, and second year probably either. Um, and then I would say just um, there was a quick question about this. For at least the Canadians, your driver's license is fully transferable and you don't have to retest. So one of the first things I'd recommend uh, when you come to Brisbane uh, is to go and get the Australian driver's license. You just have to pay a fee and that way you'll have sort of a piece of Australian identity documentation. And so from something as simple as like going to order a drink at a bar and they're not confused about where your ID is from and think it's fake because it's Canadian to just having a piece of official government documentation in Australia makes life a lot easier. It helps with getting a lease and rentals and anything like that. So that's something I'd recommend. Uh, so really livable city, Brisbane, super easy to get everywhere. There's tons of things to do, tons of activities, lots of festivals right around because the weather is really good here. So most of the year, like other than the like some rain that happens every so often, it's pretty much sunny year round, like 25 degree average. Um, it is fully transferable, Chelsea, fully transferable. You just pay a fee and they give you the equivalent Australian driver's license. And so from all states uh, or all provinces in Canada, 
whatever level you have, if you have your G, you have your class five, whatever the equivalent, you will get uh, pushed to it. And everyone I know pretty much got upgraded to the full license here, even if you're technically on like a, a G2 or like a learner's back home. Um, but yeah, so no issues at all. Climate is great. 25 degrees year round, especially from Canada and certainly from someone from Calgary living the life. Uh, though you do have to consider when you do go home for Christmas, it will still be cold. <laughs> but what can you do? Great, thank you. Um, over to you, Maggie. Uh, yeah, echoing a lot of what was just said, I think um, you don't need a car, uh, definitely in the beginning. Um, and if you do want to rent one for a quick weekend getaway, there's this GoGet system, which is a really easy, uh, affordable rent-a-car system. And our North American licenses, Canadian and American, are transferable, so you'll be okay to drive. Um, it's much more affordable than renting a car back home, by the way. And I guess my biggest concern was kind of the food situation. I think when I came to one of these, that was like my first question. <laughs> um, it's really great here. Uh, there's a lot of variety. There's great types of um, Asian cuisine. There's been great steak here. So if you're a foodie, do not fret. There's so many options available here. Great. Thank you. Yeah, my favorite restaurant is uh, Same Same, which is um, Asian fusion. Absolutely delicious and worth a look. Uh, Jacinta, anything you wanted to add? Uh, I just want to say, you know, living in Brisbane all my life, um, I have traveled quite a bit. I just want to say that I'm not just a homebody. Um, you know, Brisbane's had a real glow up in the last couple of years. So there's some great restaurants and bars and all sorts of things happening around the river which is fantastic i've just popped in the chat there so it's very livable um the uq transport links and your information so you'll get a go card and you're about to tap on the bus um, as you go um, and there's lots of you know if you click on that uq transport links there's maps of um, st lucia um, as well that you can check out um, and the other thing, I might just ask one of the others about the CRN, maybe, in the chat there. Yeah, I'll answer this in the chat, but I can really quickly say, um, do not fret. It's a very uh, streamlined and easy process. Um, is that that's the kind of comparison to our DMV back home? Um, it's very, very efficient. I can, I'll type a better response, but yeah, don't worry. Okay. Thank you. The other thing I wanted to mention was in your first year, you will spend, so if you're coming in in uh, 2024, you'll spend most of your time at St Lucia in that first year um, and maybe travelling to the Royal Brisbane or PA or MARTA, um, but you can jump on the 66 bus route. So, um, you know, you can set yourself up around the city and, be, and you know, for the first year um, or even the second year, to be honest. And then uh, going from there, then you'll sort of spend more time out in the hospitals. Great, thank you. Um, Maggie, I might get you to, what does a day look like for a first year? Um, you're mostly in St. Lucia. You, Because there's been a few questions about the learning communities and maybe do you also want to touch on uh, TBLs and how those are structured? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, most of our time is at the St. Lucia campus. We do go to our learning community, which is our allocated hospital. I would say once every couple of weeks, the reason we go there is to do procedural skills. So for example, kind of learning about CPR and certain um, more involved processes that's happening in the hospitals. Um, to kind of summarize the day, um, we have our morning classes. So as mentioned before, kind of getting on the morning schedule will be a bit beneficial. Um, and then so you start in the morning and then you typically end um, by like early afternoon, I would say. And in that day, you have something called a TBL, which is team based learning. Um, that's where you sit in your groups and you have this table of five people and you discuss cases. That's very hands on learning. So you get to kind of look at the symptoms and make a diagnosis and you discuss it as a group. And it's been very, very uh, beneficial for most students in the sense that you're actually kind of applying what you're learning. Um, so that is what a TBL is, basically a group discussion based kind of case overview session happening on campus. And I think my favorite class of first year is something um, 
called the h &E, which is where we learn to do exams and we learn to kind of take histories of patients. Uh, that happens once a week. And I would say that's where you have the most kind of tangible applications of skills. So you're taking what you're learning and you get to kind of feel like um, a real doctor first year. So that's been really nice. Great, thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions. Uh, yes, Jeffrey, the recording will get sent out after this. Um, Maggie, how is anatomy taught in first year and TBLs, are they the same group each time or does it switch up? Okay, so for the first part, anatomy is taught through a lot of um, in-person sessions. So you go in and you actually get to see um, the cadavers and they're fixed. So don't worry about that thing. Um, like it's very sanitary if that's your concern, don't worry about that. It's very interesting, very hands-on. Um, it's also accompanied by kind of preparation work. So they'll post slides and videos to watch prior to coming in and seeing the cadavers. So having that kind of prior study really helps make the most out of it. Um, so that's how anatomy is handled. And as far as TBLs, yes, it's the same group each time. And it's nice because you build a really strong rapport with that group of people. Great, thank you. There was a question there about the white coats ceremony so that's held for the UQ Oshner students in their third year so I guess here in Australia uh, doctors don't wear white coats it's more of a North American thing so um, that's why this the uh, ceremony is held when you move to the US and you enter the clinical years of program um, okay so we'll move on to the final topic which I guess is the fun bit so outside of study what do you like to do on your downtime so a lot of people will be new to uh, Brisbane and the area so um, have you visited beaches have you got plans to travel to Australia New Zealand Tasmania um, uh, uh, Pranav I might start with you what do you do on your downtime and where have you traveled so far? Uh, so for me, mostly during the downtime, like I am a foodie, as Maggie mentioned, I have a tier list of every single restaurant I've been to in Brisbane. It's like a hundred different places over two years. So in terms of food, if you have any questions at any point, shoot me a message. I've got you. Uh, same, same is really good. I do back that, Brian. <laughs> I was um, going to ask what, what what is your top pick? Uh, so my current favorite restaurant in the city, uh, and some of the Americans might appreciate this, is a place called Creole Soul Kitchen. It is like proper like uh, Creole Southern food. It's by like the most Texan guy you'll ever meet from Dallas as the owner. And so we went, we go there. That is like the restaurant my friends and I go to most often. Uh, I had to wait like two. The first time we went there, I had to wait like an hour on a Monday night, which is very rare for any restaurant uh, in most major cities. But no, there's a lot of good food here, a lot of places to go. So one of the most common things my friends and I do is we'll just go to South Bank, uh, which is like the most accessible area for a lot of people. Um, and then there's like an entire strip of restaurants and shops uh, by the river. And it's a really gorgeous area. So just walking around there, going to a lot of parks is really nice. Um, cinema or going to the theater is very cheap here to go for movies. Um, it's about like $8 for your ticket. So for any North Americans there, that's quite nice. So that's a really fun activity that a lot of us do, um, at least my friends and I. So we all dressed up in pink. We went to the Barbie movie here, stuff like that. Um, and then just in general, I love exploring cities and exploring Australia. And so I've been to Sydney. I've been to Melbourne. Um, I've gone around to sort of the Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast and sort of driven anywhere around Brisbane. And I've done the North and South Island in New Zealand while I've been here. So I've done a lot of stuff. Australia is really nice because it's really close to sort of the other side of the world for anyone from North America. And so even from here, I've gone to Malaysia and Singapore as well in my breaks. And so it's a lot of access to a lot of really cool places on this side of the world. The food is great. Um, and then like, I, for me, most of my regular day to day is like, I study, I go to the gym, I go grocery shopping and I cook a lot. And so there's a lot of great international grocery stores in the area that I live. So if that's a concern or something you like, you are afraid you'll have trouble finding. There's like one of every single culture um, around me. And so you'll be able to find anything you want to cook a lot. So like that's mostly what I do in Brisbane. Uh, nothing super exciting, but there's so much great stuff like Broadway shows. The museums are great and free. The state library is really nice. Anything by the liver, river. Eat Street is this like urban food market by the river. That's also really fun. The beaches are really great. There's some pretty solid amusement parks as well, like not far away. Pretty much like everything you'd want in Australia is within like an hour of Brisbane. 
And then if there's any, like something really major, like if you want to attend the Australian Open or the Australian Grand Prix, a ticket to Melbourne or Sydney is not that hard to get. And it's not that, um, and not that expensive either. And so you have a lot of access to a lot of like really cool events because Australia is a hotspot for a lot of stuff. So yeah, I love living in Brisbane. It's great. Well, some great advice. Uh, Maggie. Um, yeah, echoing a lot of that, I just like to eat, explore, and be happy. <laughs> it's been really great living here thus far. Um, I would say that you can do a lot of the stuff that you wish to do in North America in Australia with a lot more ease and affordability. And that's been why I think I'm capitalizing on so much. Like the shows are more affordable. The travel is more affordable and accessible. Like if you want to go see a concert, the tickets don't sell out before they open. Um, so you can actually go to the concerts here. So it's kind of opening your mind to that kind of change. And it's a very positive change. So, yes. Thank you. Uh, Jacinta, anything you wanted to add? I think um, for the younger generation, um, there's a lot of festivals as well. And um, on weekends, there's markets. So, you know, South Bank have markets and most of the, like a few suburbs around, there's um, powerhouse markets at New Farm. They're always fun to go to. And they do a lot of, act, like, um, you know, uh, weekend street um, festivals and things like that. So there's, like, food festivals and, um, you know, just great, great opportunity. There's always something happening. It's a great place to live. Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, so I think we've got through most of the questions, so we might do a wrap up. Um, so what advice would you give um, students uh, moving to uh, to Brisbane? Obviously, it's exciting and new, um, but they might be a little bit apprehensive. Um, Maggie, any advice from you? Yeah, um, my favorite kind of line of advice is everything is figure outable. Anytime I get anxious, whether it be a change of city or something in my academic life, just kind of remind yourself, you'll figure it out. It's really not that bad. I feel I had a lot of apprehension prior to moving here. And looking back, I feel like that was kind of unwarranted. Um, you'll figure it out. There's a great support system around you, whether it's UQ or your fellow students. So that's kind of my main um, word of advice try to stay calm and be optimistic and it'll all fall into place great advice uh Prana? yeah i agree with maggie there everything is figured outable uh if you're afraid that like especially like i learned a lot of people when like packing and stuff especially like oh i'll leave something at home i can't get it here you can pretty much get everything you can back home Honestly, I think the only thing you can get is like some snacks. So if you're really attached to some Twinkies or something, you can still find them here, but like you can put those in your suitcase. But uh, other than that, you can find everything in Brisbane. You can pretty much do everything here. Like if you're like me or even maybe Maggie, and you want to do a lot of stuff in advance, you can. Like I even set up my phone plan and everything in advance if you really want to. But there's no real, no real need for it. You can come here, take your time, figure everything out. Most of the important stuff is really, really easy to do. And so I wouldn't stress too much about it. I know it's very easy to say, very hard to follow through, but you can figure everything out. You can get everything here. If you come with nothing prepared, it wouldn't take you long to sort of fully get settled and get everything you want. So I'd highly recommend, especially before you come to Brisbane, make the most of your time at home. Brisbane's a really exciting, really great place to live. Uh, and it'll be a great place to sort of have your new hub at for the next few years. But yeah, just make the most of it. Come here, you'll enjoy it. And then as Maggie said, everything is figure outable. Great, thank you. Uh, Jacinta? Well, I think it's uh, important to remember that everyone's going through the same thing, right, most people. So, you know, all our international students coming together, you know, UQ really welcomes welcomes you. We get you to, I think one of my things for advice is to probably get a general practitioner. So we call them GP, a doctor. Um, you know, set yourself up for support early. Um, meet with the GP um, and just have a chat. So if you need support throughout your four years, you've already made that connection. And um, reach out for support early because we're all here to support you. In the medical faculty, you have myself and Valeska who are dedicated um, medical student support advisors. No other faculty have dedicated advisors. So we, we're here. You can send us an email. You can book in for an appointment with us. Um, 
you know, and we respond very quickly. So we're here to support you. And yeah, the peer support from students is really strong. So it's a fan fantastic uh, university and program to do. Thank you. And um, there's one last question in there, Jacinta, about finding affordable housing close to campus. Any advice on that? Well, I did put a link up. Let me just go back. That's if you scroll off campus living. So they have some options for students as well. Um, but rental.com um, would be the, isn't it? the Yeah, I'll put a link up anyway, but it's rental.com for Brisbane. Um, yeah, and, you know, maybe connecting with some other students prior to coming. Um, if you're Canadian, there's a pretty strong Canadian support group before you come over. You know, you might want to um, connect with other students. There's flatmates.com as well, if you don't want to live with any MD students. Um, yeah, I just think looking around, but you will, the advice is to actually go and have a look at the places, unless there's Scape or something like that, which is purpose-built student accommodation. But any other um, rentals, please go in person and have a look before you sign up and give away your money. Great, thanks. And I see that Maggie's just put in there, connected via social media is the biggest recommendation. Um, so okay. thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Maggie and uh, Pranav for your advice. And, uh, and of course, uh, Jacinta. Have a good evening or morning, wherever you are, and look forward to seeing you at orientation. Bye. Thanks, everyone.